Today we are going to make chloracetamide, which is a precursor to the famous nootropic drug modafinil. I would like to make some modafinil myself, but I don't know if this would be legal in Germany. Therefore I'm simply going to swap out the diphenylmethane group for a fluorine group. It is also used to make a pharmaceutical, which is used to treat dementia and as a cognitive enhancer known as paracetam. I might actually make some of that stuff after doing my legal research. Without further ado, let's begin with the actual preparation. We need 50 ml of 25% ammonia solution, about 80 grams of ethyl chloroacetate, distilled water and anhydrous calcium chloride. If you are wondering where this strange amount of ethyl chloroacetate comes from, I added it to a flask, weighed it out and calculated how much ammonia we needed. I used a very small excess of ammonia, but this is not a good idea. Too much ammonia will lead to the formation of glycine and not to chloracetamide. A small excess of ethyl chloroacetate would be ideal. We added the ammonia to an addition funnel and below that we set up a magnetic stirrer and an ice bath. The temperature should be kept between 0 and 5 degrees celsius and therefore I added the ammonia over the course of about an hour. To keep the ice bath extra cold I added some sodium chloride. The reaction taking place is known as an aminolysis. Our ester ethyl chloroacetate reacts with ammonia to form chloroacetamide and ethanol. If the reaction got too hot and too much ammonia was used, we would end up with this glycine, which we don't have any use for. At the end of the reaction everything was allowed to sit in the ice bath for 15 more minutes before performing a vacuum filtration. Chloracetamide is poorly soluble in cold water and therefore it crashed out as this white powder. Everything was vacuum filtered and afterwards I washed it several times using distilled water. And there you have it, beautiful crystals of chloracetamide. Now there's only one thing left to do. We scraped it onto a piece of paper and put it into a desiccator of anhydrous calcium chloride. After drying we were left with about 25 grams of chloracetamide. This represents a yield of about 41%, which is absolutely horrible and this means that I will have to repeat this preparation someday in the future. Anyways, this is how you make chloracetamide and I hope that you enjoyed today's video. However, this is not all the chloracetamide I have. I actually have another bottle of even more chloracetamide, but I don't know how pure it is. It might have degraded over time, so if you know any convenient method to test how pure it is, I'd appreciate if you let me know. I hope you liked today's video and if you did, make sure to drop me a subscribe. Until next time.